Success in farming is all about precision and efficiency, ensuring every seed, every drop of water, every nutrient and treatment counts. TerraPlex Ag is helping farmers all over Iowa and the Midwest do just that. With precision ag-grown technology and support from TerraPlex, you'll boost your productivity and make timely and informed decisions, all while reducing your costs and increasing your profit. It's time to revolutionize your farming. Harvest the benefits with TerraPlex Ag. Visit TerraPlexAg.com. What's up? Welcome to Williams and Bloom here on your Sunday. It is the 17th of March, and the madness has begun with one hell of a weekend in Kansas City. Of course, we will break all that down. We are also going to react to the NCAA tournament draws for the Iowa State men and women's programs that just got those. Well, we're doing this live for a lot of people right now, um, but the largest part of our audience will likely be on the podcast feed on Monday mornings. Keep that in mind when you are listening. We are presented as always by our friends at Mechdyne, the Mechdyne Corporation, and uh, here in the Wild Rose Casino Studios, and we are fueled by Cody Road. Iowa State will take on South Dakota State in the men's NCAA tournament. The Iowa State women's team will head to Stanford to take on a familiar face, Brent Bloom, where the the uh, committee did Iowa State dirty on both sides with these little cute little games. I I have a lot of opinions on this. I will let you give your reaction first. People have heard from me already. Yeah, so let's just quickly on, on the women's side. I mean, obviously, Brenda Freeze is the head coach at Maryland, has been there now for, shoot, 20-plus years, has won a national championship. I think they've made three Final Fours. Obviously, she's from Iowa, uh, coached under Fenley when Iowa State really got the program going, is Stacy Freeze's sister. So a lot of connections there. That'll be the main storyline for that game. Maryland had an interesting year, clearly, to be a 10 seed. Uh, but it is – when Maryland's good, they can be really good. I mean, they beat Ohio State by 20 in the Big Ten tournament, and obviously Ohio State's a two seed. So this is a really, really good Maryland team. Uh, yeah. Kind of a tough break as a 10 seed, but uh, here nor there. I mean, Iowa State knew it was going to have to play a good team at some point when you're going to be in that 7-10 to 10 seed region. Uh, I guess the good news, in a way, is you don't have to play in Iowa City, but um, either way, it's, it was going to be tough. Stanford's really good on the other side. But all in all – you know, like we saw in the Big 12 tournament for the women, you have Audie Crooks, Addie Brown, and Emily Ryan. Uh, that's a pretty good three-headed monster. And so I think Iowa State's going to have a chance, for sure, uh, to win a game. And then I think they can give Stanford some issues now. Uh, but that's a, that's a long way to go out west. And uh, even longer for Maryland, though, too. So that'll yeah, be an interesting one. I don't, has that been a – have they announced that game day No, it, the okay. As of right now, they have not. Okay, so that I just I, looked I, right before we went live. So it, if that happens, if that changes while we're on the air, I'll let you guys know. Interestingly, Iowa State does have some history in that arena. Uh, Iowa State actually played there in 2009 mm-hmm. in the regional when Iowa State beat Michigan State. I believe Iowa State was the four seed. Um, last second shot by Allison Lacey. It all comes full circle, everybody. But then Iowa State played Stanford in the in the Elite Eight, and um, I think that was Jane Apple for Stanford, who just went crazy. Iowa State ended up losing by, I think, you know, double figures or so. But certainly have some experience out there. Um, I don't think the crowd will be huge, but, you know, when you go play on somebody else's home floor, it's always tough to win a couple of games. But give me this, this freshman. I know they're going to be excited. I like for them. They get two brand teams. I think that's really good. Um, yeah. This isn't a game. It's not like last year where I don't know. I mean, it. I just think that this will this will be a matchup for Iowa State that they'll be they'll be up for. There's good history there, and you know Iowa State's going to give it its best shot with this group. Well said. I think the Iowa State women like to me, and I hope Coach doesn't hear me say this and get upset. Uh, I feel like they're just playing with house money at this point. Um, they had an awesome tournament in Kansas City. Uh, I don't think the momentum could be stronger for what they're going to have coming back next year. Not to say it doesn't matter. It's not what I'm saying. Sure. My point is it's kind of like there's just not a lot of pressure and you just go out there and have a hell of a lot of fun and roll the dice and see what happens. And, man, you play like you did against Oklahoma, you could be in a sweet 16 with this draw. 100%. I, I know one thing. 
about this team is they will not be intimidated by some brand name on the other side. No. I mean, that's, I think this, that's what I've appreciated so much about this freshman class and Emily as well. It's not like, Oh my gosh, we're a little Iowa state. It's like, no, we've got as much swagger as anybody. And I, I don't think there's a lot of Iowa state teams that have could say that in the past. And it, as, as well as Audi Crooks is playing and Addie Brown, um, I think Iowa State can still make a run. I, you're going to play good teams. You, you always do when you get to this point. But excited for them to, to prove it on a legit national stage. They will get headline games, I would assume, based on the matchups with both Maryland and with Stanford. And I think we're going to see Audie Crook start to really get some national attention here in the next 10 days. And I think she's on that trajectory of superstardom. And this could be another step in that trajectory. All right. Um... Let's get it. We're going to have to move quicker tonight than we normally do because we have so many topics to hit. Good stuff there by Bloom on the women side of things. Uh, Connor Ferguson will be covering them the whole way, so we're going to have a lot more of that. We're going to have preview shows for the men and the women. Um, I will be heading to Omaha on Tuesday, it looks like. Uh, before we get into all that, I do want to, th this is just new. We told you guys we would have information for this on tonight's show. And we do, uh, we are going to be hosting a party in Omaha coming up on Wednesday night at five o'clock. Yeah. Five o'clock at beer can alley in Omaha, which is beer can alley is right by the arena. And it's in the Capital District there in downtown Omaha. We will be doing a live Williams and Bloom show at 6 o'clock. So it's 6 o'clock that night. Um, this will not be posted on the podcast feed for two reasons. One, because I want to be able to have a few drinks. Um, <laughs> you don't say. Mainly because I don't really want to hassle with all the like gear. And yeah, then the, you get the weird feedback cross. Yeah, I just I don't I don't want to mess that with smart it. everybody. Well, and frankly, like this is kind of a side thing for me, at least because I'm there to cover the tournament. Right. So I'm going to be running around and I don't have time to go and set up all that. And do we'll have that. another podcast this week, though. Yes, we'll have another podcast yeah. before the but that will be and, and Brent. Um, I kind of set us up with this and you and your wife ran with it for we will. So the owners of Beer Can Alley are huge Iowa State fans. And I believe, so we're bringing our, our friends from Ames Lager and right. Westo in. Uh, and they're going to make a donation for every Ames Lager bought throughout the whole tournament. Is that correct? That's a fact. How cool is that? <laughs> Jesus. I uh, I just told so, my Westo friends, like, Westo, we love you better you guys. get some more beer down there. Let's get, let's get those trucks loaded up. Come so it's now. actually the three bars. They're all connected. Beer Can yep. Alley, The Exchange, and Annie's Irish Pub. And so if you buy an Ames Lager during the tournament at any of those spots, for every one you buy, a buck goes to the We Will Collective. That's and a good the deal. The portal opens tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's when just, does that portal open again? So just a challenge for everybody. So no, I did so actually. Cool that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks to Teddy uh, yeah. for Hosting looking us, us up there. with that and we'll we'll look forward to that so basically we're we're encouraging you guys throughout the tournament to just hang out at those spots because they're giving back to the collective and obviously it's a crucial time of year and on top of it when you're a two seed you may maybe i'm wrong brent you can clarify if i if i am but I mean, I, I got to figure when you are ho high profile and you beat Houston like that and like there's just more eyes on Iowa State now. And I, I would I would guess that drives up value. Am I wrong? I don't want I don't want this to be an all NIL show, but like I was just thinking about that last night. It's like, oh, man, that Gilbert guy is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. People are watching. So real quick and, and again i'm not one to dismiss uh anything when it, because we we still need a lot of help and there's gifts that are still being matched up to two hundred thousand dollars this month and so that beer that you buy in omaha will go towards that as well by the way quick correction from my guy uh andringa iowa state played stanford at cal not at not at stanford. Oh, there you go. close there you go. but same in no cal a little bit different 
mistake. God damn it, Bloom. I'm just ah. You have one job. You're the information. I know. I'm sorry. I missed it. That's why we have. I'm the blowhard. You're the information guy. But it's uh yeah. So that still same area, close enough. Yeah, I know. It's it's that's the crazy thing is this this you already have guys going on the portal right now, um, and they can legally do so and and start getting contacted as of tomorrow and. Uh, obviously, obviously, it's got some really good players, so it all goes to a great cause. That's why I love people like Westo, people like Teddy, and the folks at Beer Can Alley. We're literally doing this all cycling people. Like we're yeah. we're all helping each other out. Fanatic is obviously very involved with this whole thing say. too. Yeah, <laughs> not to dismiss you, buddy boy. I don't need it. Uh, but no, it's just I mean, and I just keep coming back to it. Like when I'm, we're gonna have a long discussion on did Iowa State get jobbed by the committee? I have some thoughts. But just real quick before we get into that, weeks like this week prove yeah. how cool it is when you do have success. It almost, in this era to me, it almost makes it extra special because yeah. two years ago, you thought, oh my gosh, Iowa State's just, you know, on life support because it's they're going to be the Royals to the Yankees. And here Iowa State is just demolish the number one team in the nation and maybe the greatest week in Kansas City Iowa State fans have had. And um, it's just the start. And the cool part is, is Iowa State said, you know what? We're not going to celebrate. We're driving back to Ames because we're worried about next week. And you better believe, you better believe that this team is, I, I do not have, uh, how do I say this nicely? I don't have Hampton vibes or Frosted Tips vibes with this group. I almost like the fact that this team got disrespected in this way. And it, it's disrespectful. With the Iowa State's ranking is disrespectful. To go into the week, number seven by the humans, beat three quad one teams, two teams that are in the top 10 of every ranking, defeat the best team in the country by 30, and a drop a spot on the seed line? Are you kidding me? What are we doing? But at the end of the day, it is what it is. You're going to have to win six hard games anyway. It never falls perfectly into place. I know we have visions of Michigan State in 2000, and listen, I've never been more angry in my life than that game. I get it. I would not rather not have to play Connecticut and Boston. But the odds of those both teams happening happen to be there, you just don't know. Something's going to happen yeah. in this region. If it's anything to be upset, I'd be mad if I was of Connecticut because Connecticut has some some monsters in its region too. So, you know, again, I, I don't I don't necessarily love the draw, but the draw only matters really until the games tip off on Thursday. And then there's going to be an upset or two along the way. Yeah. There just is. You're you right. cannot lose I... sleep over now. Is it disrespectful? It is, and I think that's great because Iowa State has another reason, another chip on its shoulder that, hey, we're still not getting the respect even though we've done literally everything we possibly could, including beat the number one team twice this year, beat it by 30 on a neutral floor. All because you, because you scheduled Grambling State and, and whoever else in the non-conference. Like, give me a break here. I'm le- <laughs> we're, it's, This is good. This will make for a good conversation tonight. Are you having another beer? I got names longer, buddy. I might go get a beer. You do. Hey, you're not a two seed very often, everybody. Cheers to that, right? Like, I know I'm mad too. I wanted the one, although I didn't think it was really possible. But this is still pretty cool stuff. I'm enjoying well, it. Well, okay. Hey, do me do me a favor. Do an ad read for Colin Newell real quick. I'm gonna go get me an ice cold beer. I got you. I got I All got right. Colin give Newell. Co- up. Give Colin Newell a shout out. Call, Colin Newell, you're not cool unless you go with Newell. I know he's got multiple Cyclone fanatics signing up as we speak. William saved supposedly $1,000. I saved $700 going with Newell. My coverage actually got better. And you better believe I'm uh, hitching my automobile over to Omaha this week. But I got good coverage with uh, State Farm. So, or excuse me, (laughs) Farm Bureau. So nothing, nothing's going to impact what we're doing over there. And call Newell, awesome guy. He'll get you great coverage. Super easy to do it. Does it all electronically. Uh, go ahead and contact Colin. That's Colin with two L's. Colin Newell at Farm Bureau Financial Services. And by the way, he still he still is for everybody that gets a quote. Just gets a quote. You don't have to sign up. Colin is also uh, giving money back to the Weeble Collective. And as mentioned, the portal opens on Monday. So Colin, huge help. Huge help. And uh, he knows Brock Purdy. He was in Brock Purdy's wedding. He was at least at the event. So there you go. Talk to, talk to Colin about that. Colin Newell. Call a new Farm Bureau Financial Services. How's that, C Dub? Aiden, did he's I lose? Not back. He's not oh, back yet. You got to keep going. 
Where's he going? You gotta keep going. <laughs> Where's he? Like he is he? I, I've been in his basement. His fridge he had to is brew not the that, beer. His beer is not that far away. I think he's just leaving me high on high and dry here, Aiden. How was how was Kansas City for you, my friend? Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was my first time down there, actually. First so, timer. Yeah, I'd never been, so going to the championship wasn't bad. Well, now you have to come back every year. Yeah, we, we've you? never lost. I would say it's never <laughs> lost since I've been there. So, C Dub, did you go to Alaska for that beer? Man, that was uh, so. D- I'm gonna be brutally honest with you, okay? Because I don't make shit up for our audience. We have a brand new sponsor to Williams and Bloom, which I'm very excited about, yes. and it's it's West O. That's right, and Ames Lager. Because we're, I'm here to sell the shit out of Ames Lager to make money for the We Will Collective. Well, the problem is I didn't have any Ames Lager in that refrigerator. <laughs> and I didn't want to put Anheuser-Busch on camera. <laughs> so I had to go get a glass. And this is our guy, Matt. Hey, uh, I need to get some Ames Lager. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matty. He's listening. Well, you we could have run the... down the street. You could have run the... down the street. We got the deal done when we were in Kansas City, and I haven't been to a store since. So um, I I didn't want to put bush light on the camera so i poured respect. it into this glass here i was respect. trying to be you know good, very respectful to our friends but thank you to them we have a new sponsor on cyclone fanatic and it is westo and we're gonna look to do an event up there in okaboji with them and this will be a really good relationship i i can already tell there's there's times in this business where it's you start doing something with a partner and you're like man i i hope it works like this one's going to be a great deal for everybody involved. So we appreciate them. Um, you and me are coming at tonight differently. It's funny. I just talked to our, our, our guy, Jason Luch, and, and he, he's just like, I don't understand what everybody's so pissed about. He's like, we got to freaking get there to play UConn. And I'm like, okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah. I, right. and I, that's kind of where I was. It's like, it's, it's not a terrible draw basketball wise. Cause no. you know, it's, it's really not uh, until you get there. Here's my point. Yeah, you got to get there. I, I, I got very personal. I, I took it very personal with the South Dakota State. So you basically have Greg McDermott's entire coaching tree in one in location. one bracket. Um, I, I'm gonna. I gave on the instant reaction. I gave a lot of people. If you guys watch this, I apologize for doubling up. But so Eric Henderson, Brent, Hendo, yeah. I mean, this is, this sucks. Uh, I mean, insanely close friend of mine, and I'm, I'm not even the coach. I know him through TJ Otzelberger and Greg McDermott. I, I've always thought Hendo might be the next head coach at Iowa State, potentially. He would be, you know. he would be on the list for sure. He would be. A, this guy, is yeah. a he bleeds Iowa State. He yeah. loves Iowa State. But he's doing a hell of a job at South Dakota State. He took over for TJ when TJ went to UNLV. You know, the, this. here's what I hate about it. Because I had two teams I was going to root for March Madness. It was South Dakota State and it was Iowa State. Um, whatever. By doing this shit, nobody yeah. around the country cares about this. They don't. What happens they, now is these kids from South Dakota State, it'll be less of a big deal for Iowa State. These kids from South Dakota State are now going to just be asked about this the whole time and, and they won't even pay any attention to it. I, I just I don't see the point in this like um you know there's there's some of them sometimes like oh St. John's let's put Patino against Louisville okay that would make sense because everybody would be locked into that I, this is so dumb I don't and then you have the do you think that they thought about that at all no I don't here's what I here's can I give you my honest opinion because I thought this was going to happen I really did I had, I had, a, I had a feeling it's as simple as location. It's yeah, as simple as I, it, that. It makes sense. I hate because it though. I I don't like it either. There's no way. I mean, I, I maybe Jamie would have said something up to the committee that because he was in the room, or you know, at least not a part of the conversations when Iowa State's involved. He can't be, but you get it. But at some point, a 15 seed is going to play a two seed. There's there's four of those matchups. TJ put... said that in post. Did you see his press no. conference? No. Yeah. You, you he like, said this... the same thing. This was a high likelihood of happening because South Dakota State was going to be a 14 to a 16 seed, and yeah, Iowa State was right. going to be a one or a two. So it's like, yeah. And then on the on the Drake thing, very similar. 
you they're they're in that seven to ten region. There I was told a Michael Amire this last week. I go, we're going to see you in Drake it's, or yeah, in, I mean, in Omaha. <laughs> it, and they probably and they didn't play this year. So that's the one thing that can maybe protect you is if Iowa State would have played either school this year, they try and avoid that if they can. Although it's not a guarantee. The other problem Iowa State was going to run into that made this even more likely is because there were nine Big Twelve teams that get in, they try and avoid a matchup with another Big Twelve team in that it's second. It's not round. an easy job. It's just hard to find the right things to fix. Like I, I, I think we could look at it and go, "Oh my gosh, you know what are they doing?" I think it's as simple as location, and yeah, just you're right. It, makes, it just ends up that way. I, I, I don't like it because I don't, I don't think it's fair for. Well, I mean, TJ and Hendo will have to be asked about that all week. Um, Good Hendo, thing is, I think I can get Hendo on the pod, there, so that'll well, be fun for our audience. Because I, I mean, he's one of my buddies. Like, well, selfishly, you want you want him to win because you I like do. the guy. It sucks. Yeah, but this now, thing not, sucks. Now. Yeah, and so does TJ. Like he was TJ's TJ's right hand guy for six yeah. years. I. Uh, but I mean, I basketball. It. You're right. By the way, you are right. I <laughs> and I admitted to Aiden when I was doing the reaction. I go, I'm being overly emotional on this, and I know it, but. I hope you guys know I'm always going to be authentic with you. I'm going to tell you what I really think. And my heart sunk. Now, then then you have this the the Drake storyline. And, oh, God. I already texted Connor Ferguson, and I said, there's one thing that you can do to put your job in danger, and it's to keep texting or talking. If you talk about Drake this week, you're fired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I, kidding. Connor, I know, but no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> No, I, and it's going to be a talker. Like you, you're gonna, you're gonna see it. There, the, the, how do I say this nicely? The traditional media in Des Moines is going to love that matchup if it happens. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, they oh, are yeah. just going to eat it up because, like, oh, Iowa State refuses and to play Drake. And Iowa State is going to be painted as the villain. The vi- like, oh, no I doubt. Promise you. That, listen, that, listen to radio tomorrow. Like my guy. Travis Justice is going to be all. Uh, in, Can I get some? I, I tweeted this. I go. This is great for sports talkers like me. Like th- this is great. Like th- I, you can't draw up a better storyline than that. I don't know who needs to hear this because it's going to come out at some point. But the reason the Big Four Classic does not exist is not because of Iowa State. It was it's, Iowa. It was Iowa. It was yeah. Iowa that put the kibosh on it. So we don't want to do this anymore. Iowa State was more than willing to continue the Big Four Classic as it was. Iowa State lost money. From not yeah, was, to that was a revenue piece for it, it was 100 percent the high v money that was involved it, it, yeah. yes so this was not so don't let that story get out there that iowa state didn't want to play drake anymore in des moines now does iowa state want to go play in des moines at the nap center for and, and have a home and home uh i'm not going to go that far no i think it was a i think iowa state has approached drake before for a two two for one and drake's not interested in that so it's if it comes down to that the story is going to get out just like it did what was that 10 years ago when Wichita State played Kansas in a round of 32 game in a very similar setup? And it was all, you know, oh my gosh, you know, Kansas refuses to play Wichita State. You you can paint the picture as you want. I'm just telling you, the Big Four Classic no longer exists because of uh, Iowa, not Iowa State. My guy but Clint's I watching I, on Twitter real quick, and he he raises a point that, that we were going to get to. We're, we're simply reacting to the the news um basketball wise this isn't a terrible no. draw in the in, in omaha like that because no. clint clint says are we more afraid of south dakota state washington state and drake no, than Houston? Not. that's not what we're saying um it's just more like the the storylines and clint i would love for you to live in this market for a year and then you would know why why we're why we're going down this path with the drake thing um and that's another thing too that sucks though, because like I, there'd be a lot of people who live in this state. Now they got to root, you know, against one. But wh- whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's from really, a basketball standpoint, it's this fine. isn't bad. You know, no. Tucker DeVries is one of the best mid-major players in college basketball. I've watched South Dakota State a ton. I've probably watched them as much as anybody else, other than Iowa State. This is not a bad matchup. They're a good team, but they're they're a team that's been crushed by NIL over the years. You think it's hard doing what you do, try and be running one of those programs where you just and any any player you get well, is gone. 
Um, so there's... They have a good culture there. Um, they score a lot. They are a really fun team. Iowa State should be able to overwhelm them defensively. Would well, be and he, yeah, and so the and the same with, I mean, South Dakota State is um, similar. They're both so both Drake and South Dakota State. Let's just just basketball perspective. Both pretty efficient offensive teams. Actually, both really good offensive teams. Um, I wouldn't call them. You know, Drake's got the big fella who is a who's an absolute load when he wants. He's to a great him. player. Brody. Yeah, Brody. Um, but they're relatively small otherwise. And so I think it'd, it'd be interesting. I mean, uh, Drake's I just got in credit. I mean, they're 51 in Ken Palm. So if I do the math, neutral side game, Iowa State's now up to five. Iowa State's probably a five or six point favorite against Drake. So certainly not. No, I mean it's similar to playing Kansas State. It's Kansas. State. It's very yeah. similar, exactly. That that was yeah. their metrics. They are Kansas. State. Very similar. Drake very is. similar. And then uh, South Dakota State is down in the one thirties. That and line I would argue Tucker out. DeVries is the best player on those two teams. Oh, he's oh he's great. He's better he's, than anyone Kansas State has, right? He, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I would so take him over um, Perry, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, Tucker's yeah, I, a Tucker's a all power five conference player if he wanted to play in a power conference and i think that's what scares some people is you get a guy that good he can go off for 30 and then make yes. it make it interesting and they're good enough defensively i when we know about iowa state's sometimes inefficient offense i'm I am not saying that that game is but any game in the round of 32 is not going to be a guarantee for this iowa state team anyway and for so anybody just kinda, i mean you, this is it's exactly. just the tournament. It's the nature you, of the tournament. You look at the matchups here, and and you know Washington State. I think we're kind of glossing over Washington State because they're just kind of in the middle of so, nowhere. That's yeah. a really good program as well. Tell me, tell me a little bit about them. I I don't watch Pac-12 basketball. I won't lie. I only have so much bandwidth, and I watch all the McDermott coaching tree guys who I know, and I'll pop on UNLV every once in a while because I know guys on that bench and yeah. um. And then I have to watch some Iowa because of the Iowa everywhere thing. I I don't think I've seen Washington State play all year. So what do you know? Yeah, a very balanced team. Um, defensively top thirty, offensively top sixty, and they just share it really well. There, the coaches. It's it's a really neat story. I mean, he should get some love for coach of the year. And there's some question if he's going to stay uh, because obviously. Yeah. They're well, they're going to the in Big West or whatever it is. Yeah, so, whatever it's the same conference is like Gonzaga, right? The yes. West Coast Conference. Yeah. So they they had an un, so they were picked near the bottom of the Pac-12, and they went nuts in January and February. They reeled off like twelve of thirteen, where they were playing as good a basketball as anybody. And then they they dropped one to Colorado in the tournament. It's a team a little bit like Iowa State, where it can go through some stretches on offense where it's not pretty, but they're pretty balanced, and they don't really have a guy. Um, their guy is Miles Rice, who's a nice, really nice story. Look it up sometime. I think he's a cancer survivor, actually. Um, but so they are, awesome. uh, they're actually, it's kind of unfortunate that Washington State has to play Drake because they're two, I would say, unheralded programs that are playing each other. Do you know who and, is on Washington State now? <laughs> who? Swear to God. Admire and I, Michael Admire, voice of the Bulldogs, was on CW Pod on Iowa Everywhere. Okay. Joe Yesifu is on Washington State. No, he's not. Yes, he did. He left Kansas. He, he, he got hurt. Kansas. He's only yeah, played like six oh, okay. games yeah, this year. Yeah, he's not playing, so, is he? Okay. Yeah, he's, he's not he, playing. Well, he, he, he can't come back. Do we know that for a fact? Oh, he is on the roster. I don't know. Can he get a medical I gotta, redshirt? I think he played six games, so he's got he's well below. I, well, he's I got a text from, Mars, from but... some – I got a text from some Drake people, uh, and they were like, <laughs> of course – you had to talk shit about Joe Yesifu <laughs> on that podcast, and then we got matched up with him. I had two Drake people, uh, and I didn't talk shit about him. All I said was, well, I bet he regrets transferring to Kansas because he could have been, like, the best player in Drake history, scoring why, you know, all this stuff. And then he went and sat on the bench to make a million bucks or whatever. I don't know, whatever it is. And yeah. then they're like, oh, yeah, he's still playing. And I was like, what? I did not know. I didn't even realize he was on the roster. That was news. Yeah. Thank you, Aiden. And admire but so no either way uh they're gonna have the cinderella if, if it's drake or washington state america is gonna be on their side you know this west washington state left for dead in the pac-12 drake from little old des moines so i mean the public Bring sentiment your... is whatever but uh there's no question the fan representation is going to be 90 percent iowa state people Bring uh, your Cyclones versus the World Gear. Yes, 
you people are not going to be Team Iowa State for this one, everybody. Just get prepared. Just get prepared right away. The the local media thing with the Drake is going to just be. I'm avoiding oh my it. God. <laughs> it's going to just. So here's. Okay. Keep it you want to get right here. You want to get into the real drama? Thematic. You want you want some more? Some oh, more we have media? more. Okay. Yeah, well, kind of. Let's just. Can, let's can I thank our friends at Terraplex Ag yeah. real quick? Yes. Hey, we're going to be over in Western Iowa on the way. We'll swing by, uh, fly some drones over at Terraplex Ag, baby. Uh, they are, this is a phenomenal, co- what I say the other day, it's, this is like, if you're a farmer and you're not using drone technology now, you're basically in the year 2005, you're the newspaper guy and you're like, I refuse to, I refuse to shoot video on a phone for for a story i refuse to move to pivot to digital that's what you're doing check out my friends at terraplex ag the drone technology it's changing changing the way agriculture works in our country you're gonna get left behind check out our friends at terraplex ag all right what do you got so here's a story that's gonna pop up this week are you ready oh boy yeah darren darren devries watch is gonna get hot and heavy here soon yeah Great point. So, so two. Th- so this is why crazy. Why, why everyone's probably saying, "Oh my gosh, uh, look at all these storylines." That they, there's no way the committee would have known. So twofold. Uh, there is a potential connection. The Washington job is currently available. Who is the AD at Washington? C Dub. Troy Dannon. Who is from Northern Iowa? I- yes, and definitely knows. He's an of, Iowa native. Yeah. Definitely knows oh. of Darren DeVries. And and Washington is now a Big Ten job. Yes. And, are, and, and they have more money than God out there. And who is well, Drake who is Drake playing in the opening round? Washington State. Yeah. Got a lot going on here's, here. Here's the other the other part. We want to get even deeper into the weeds. There okay. is a world. And this is Paul. I mean, you guys can talk you probably will talk about this on Iowa everywhere. There are some murmurs, and I don't know how loud they're going to get, that that Fran McCaffrey is potentially trying to move on from Iowa. Mm-hmm. Who who would Iowa Agrees. target? To well, be I mean, head coach. If I was smart, they fire Fran right now and they call DeVries. Like so you've got this weird triangle all converging in Omaha with I mean, that's the thing is there's if you're dis- there's distraction on the Drake side too. I know I know it's Iowa State, but there's there's there is no question. There is zero question. He is going to be a top three person for all these high major jobs right now. And honestly, so is TJ, but I'm not concerned about TJ. Yeah, I'm not concerned about TJ either. I'm just, uh, <laughs> but just, I mean, just throws a, th- this is going to get, I'm saying the media angle. I mean, this story could pick up because odds are these Washingtons, all these Mich- the Michigans, these, these dominoes are going to start to fall. And DeVries is going to be in the middle of it while Iowa State's over there on that other side, too. Yeah. It's all true. It's all true. The McCaffrey stuff is, and then his kids like retweeting like rumor websites, and there's just a lot going on. There's something I'm telling you. There's something going on there. I don't know exactly. Well, he was trying to get out last year. He tried to get Notre Dame, and they didn't. They did not reciprocate the, the love. Yeah. So anyway, there's this. uh, You think there's some drama on a Sunday night? Just give it a couple days, everybody. What can I drum up over there? You know, I'm sniffing around. The, the fun part of my job now compared to 15 years ago is I know so many people because I'm an old guy now. I love just eh, well, they, they need oh, what are you hearing? What are you well, they, hearing? What are you the, hearing? The fact that you've got the McDermott connection with all of them. Oh. Who's the coach at Creighton? Who's the host? Bizarre, bizarre old world. What, the only thing we're missing is Hoiberg being there. You need Hoiberg. So Hoiberg said in his in his uh, post uh, selection show presser, he's like, "I thought they're going to put me next to Iowa State." He was convinced so for the same reason. I was I was really worried about that. Yep, because that was again that they could have been that seven, ten, eight, nine region. I was Iowa really State. worried about that, and then that could have been even more. It's like honestly, of all the matchups that would be notable to the committee, I would say. Nebraska and Fred versus Iowa State would be more. See, than that Drake. one would have made more sense for the storylines. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Especially like, no. being in Omaha, but they couldn't do that to Iowa State. You couldn't put a two I, seed against a seven seed in their home state, right? I would hope not. I would hope not. What a time! 
What a, yeah. If you would have said, hey, let's transport back 18 years to Greg McDermott's first staff when Hendo's a GA and TJ's a young up-and-comer who just got out of the AAU world in Chipola. Did you and, see? And here, and here we are now. I retweeted this. Uh, your old your old friend Matt Peralt retweeted it, and then it came onto my timeline at like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'd just gotten done uh, indulging in a few of these Ames lockers. In By friend, yeah, okay. Okay, Greg McDermott's coaching tree. Uh, Hendo won the Summit tourney in regular season. Otts won the Big 12 tourney. Steve Lutz, our guy Steve Lutz. Lutz? Lutz. I think it's Lutz. He won the Conference USA Championship. Yeah, Western Kentucky. Yep. DeVries won the Valley Championship. Alan Huss won the Big South regular season. And Patrick Sellers won the Northeast regular season. Greg McDermott turning into like one of the great coaching trees in college basketball right now. It's hey, where's the one job he had zero success in? Yeah, so like one place he couldn't win is Iowa State, yet his guy, his right-hand man at Iowa State is a 26-year-old, yeah. um, is the guy who's leading Iowa State to all these new heights. Well, not Dude. new heights, but we hope to lead to new heights and. Um, you know, three I, NCAA tournaments yeah. after taking it over for a team that went oh and nineteen for God's sake. Yeah, and it's all that's what's crazy. And then Iowa State's then playing its games in Omaha. Rome's winning twelve games a year in the Valley. Like there is like all kind of uh, weird. Yeah, I think that what what this goes to show is you know you you stick around long enough and you're just gonna run into these coincidences that really aren't thought of. It just means you're getting old. Uh, getting old indeed. Yes. I, I can tell you more about that. But basketball uh, wise, just real quick. I mean, I, yeah, you're looking at, uh, the lines out for South Dakota state. I would say it's a 17 point favorite, 16 and a half point favorite. I mean, it's, it's a team that is pretty efficient offensively, but goodness, Iowa state has overwhelmed similar teams with its physicality and ability to turn teams over. And I would say they, the same for Drake as well. They like to run. I don't know what their numbers are off the top of my head. Yeah. What is their tempo? Let me get you here. It's, Pull that up. It, it's gone. It's not as high as it it used to be. Okay. So yeah. South Dakota State is uh, their Ken Palm is their Ken Palm's one thirty four overall for for overall total tempo one forty eight. So okay, they so aren't that's, as that's slower than I thought. Yeah, they they aren't. It's not the same. You know, run run style that that TJ and Hendo had well, when they were there. Do you remember? So Eric Henderson is. One of those a head coach against Iowa State. I called that game for the, it was the pandemic year. The it was pandemic like game. Empty Hilton and I. I was calling during that game. I was calling the Iowa Iowa State women's game from a studio <laughs> at iHeart because we couldn't go to the game. Yeah, it was. We were calling it on TV uh, yep. for the radio, and I uh, there was. I called it. I called the game at Hilton with. Um, I guess it was Lindsey Fennelly, and there were 10 people in the arena. And yes. uh, Baylor Shireman, Baylor Shireman hit a, a dagger to win that who game went to Creighton. from South Dakota State. Who went to Creighton. Yeah. Uh, that was that, that was that kind of when we all knew that team was going to struggle. Yeah, that, that, team, team. that team was kind of, whew. It's But that's, I thought about that too today, c was like, oh my gosh, how far has the Iowa State program come? Since that was only three and a half years ago, in the middle of COVID, yeah. when nobody could go to the games, and you're losing to South Dakota State, and that was not the worst part of that season. I want to thank our friends at Kelderman Manufacturing. Shout out to my guy Jeff Kelderman. Uh, if you are, I did see uh, hooking up again. He was with partying. Our, he was partying oh, yeah. in Power and Light. Our, our friends at uh, Mechdyne. Uh, continue to work with them with laser cutting so if you're an engineer out there uh that's what they do it's one of the great things that they do check them out at kelderman.com uh also our friends at the ivy college of business at iowa state longtime sponsor of what we do here at cyclone fanatic and we we couldn't be more grateful to them uh, and everything that they represent uh our, our good buddy dean spalding over there and uh rem reminder i mean you can get that mba you can do it all online now it doesn't take much uh, all things considered, I mean, you're getting a lot out of it, but it, it's not this massive grind that it used to be. Uh, you could do it all online. Check out our friends at the Ivy College of Business. Iowa State wins the Big 12 tournament. Um, here we go. 
uh, 40 <laughs> minutes in, and we're going to talk about Iowa like State. a week ago. Yeah, we're going to talk about Iowa State beating the number one team in the country by 30 now. I want to talk about the tournament in general. That's as good of a three-day stretch as Iowa State basketball has ever had. I thought the win was, was debating this with clones on Saturday night. One of the best wins in Iowa State history. Bar none, I'd put it up there with the Kyle Kemp, Baker Mayfield. Um, you know, there, there's a lot. I Yeah. A lot, I, you know. Football against Nebraska in the 90. Like, there's a lot of these games I, that we can pull from, but you beat the number one team in the country, and you're the best league in the country, and you just piss pound them like that. There's To the there's, point – I mean, and you're cutting down nets. You win a championship. That's one of the best wins in the history of Iowa State Athletics. There's only one game that I would say is comparable, um, at least in the ballpark. And it was the Sweet 16 game against UCLA in 2000. Um, UCLA had like six NBA guys. They had just destroyed Maryland. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, Iowa State's got no chance against all these future NBA guys, even though Iowa State was the two. I believe UCLA was the six, but Iowa State, Jamal Tinsley and Pfizer just completely railroaded those guys, won 80 to 56 in a game that was not competitive, and Iowa State made them look silly. Um, and that's that's really about the only thing that can compare. Maybe when Iowa State beat Oklahoma that same year in the Big 12 tournament final was somewhat similar, where that wasn't even close. But Iowa State literally made Houston – opt to give up in the final 10 minutes. I never thought I would see yeah. that. They literally they sat did. there, guys. They said, we're out. And you heard Kelvin Sampson's post game. Uh, my guy Randy sent this to him. I don't know if you've seen it yet, C-Dub. It was maybe the greatest uh, marketing for Iowa State University's fans in the history of marketing. It was 10 I minutes. Seen it. What did he say? It was 10 minutes straight in his post game about there was nobody in the country that was beating Iowa State tonight because that fan base was unbelievable and we had no chance walking in here. And by the way, the team's really good too. He credited the fans about 15 different times in that presser. And he basically said, you know, if we want to compete with the Iowa States of the world, our fan base better step up like theirs because they gave themselves the wow. most advantages possible. And he basically, I mean, he obviously gave credit to TJ and those two get along really well, but he was so complimentary of Iowa State and flat out said nobody was beating Iowa State the way it played today. And I agree. And that's why, you know, I don't love the draw for Iowa State. But at the same time, you play as well as you did in Kansas City. And, yeah, UConn's really good. But nobody gave Iowa State against, a chance against Houston either. And you beat them by 30. So, you know, I, I almost like this team with a, a chip on its shoulder. And you could not ask for a better three or four days in Kansas City. I, the unfortunate part is ultimately probably didn't matter. In the in this in the context of your seating, it felt like to me the committee had already decided before that game was played that this is how it was going to be. But you can't take away the experience of those three days with fifteen thousand Cyclone fans. I mean, that's, that's what I keep coming back. Like this is yeah. why you are a fan for weeks like that. It's yes, everyone wants to win the whole thing, and ultimately, I would say kind of got hosed a little bit with the seating situation. But you can never take away that three or four day experience in Kansas City and. And one that I know I'll remember for a long, long time. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I was thinking about it because the this Kansas State fan base thing is just getting really weird. <laughs> like, really, it's like I want to like them because similarities and schools between Kansas State and Iowa State. But the Tang thing and then the, the mop and the you call them a flopper. Out lips, Lipsy, yeah, the Lipsy flopper. thing. At, like, what in the hell? Anyways. um, their fans were bitching and moaning all weekend about how many Iowa State or, and like trying to. It was almost like they were trying to like shame Iowa State fans yeah. for caring so much. Yeah. It's kind of like Iowa fans have done with the football deal. It's like, oh, it's your Super Bowl, you guys care you so. You guys much. care too much. Sorry. Um, I always love anyways. that. Yeah, well, this is unfair because Iowa. It's like, well, then buy your own tickets. It's well, not, not. There's not. That's my thing. Not like, a rule on ticket purchases. No, like and. They're a hell of a lot closer to Kansas City than Iowa State is. Yeah, you know, like right. it's, it's, it's not our fault. You you guys don't care. Um, no, I, I was thinking about it because it was it was Otzelberger's first Big Twelve championship game, which is a shocking stat. Huh. Yeah, he's he never coached gone. one. 
Yep. Yeah, he was gone the years that they had won the Big 12 championship game. And like, that's cool. I was thinking about it after the game. And it's, it was it was really cool. You could because the one thing that he's got and this is why like fit just matters so much. Right. Fit is so important. So like if I'm Darren DeVries, OK, yeah, I have an I know the athletic director out there, but I mean, am I going to fit in Seattle? I don't know. Maybe he would. I don't know. But I would think about it. Like, I was yeah. a much better fit for him. Like, yes. it, it just, whatever. There's no better fit at Iowa State than TJ for a lot of reasons. One, I like the guys and gals who, I like to hire people who have, you know, scraped the shit off the toilet and worked their way up to being a doctor, you know, yep. who've yep. done everything because they're better employees, they're better leaders, they're genuinely usually better people because they don't they're not entitled and tj you know shows up this 26 year old assistant and i mean he gets dan mccarney takes him under his wing and like he meets his wife there and it becomes like this this home to him and now he's raising a family there like the guy gets it and maybe it didn't matter on the seating but if you walk into that locker room at, like tell me those guys don't Tell me it doesn't matter. You can't walk around Kansas City for that. You can't say it doesn't matter. Right. You get a banner. They get rings. You Keish, add look a at championship. Keish, look at Keith. How happy Keyshawn was. Yeah. The guy's still happy for that. Matters. Guy. And yeah. maybe, maybe that's the difference. If somebody offers him a million dollars, he's just like, man, I can't, I can't pass up on that experience. And I don't know. I just made that up. But my, if you're there, if you witnessed it, and just being there. For all of the like it really matters like some of the if you would go to you know a thousand of the biggest iowa state fans in the world ten thousand of them and say what are your favorite experiences ever as a cyclone yep. fan most of them are going to say kansas city in the big 12 tournament in all the championships so it absolutely matters um and you just can't replicate it you can't like People are going to go to Omaha. Omaha is going to be really cool this week. Omaha is going to be fun, too. Yeah. But when you go to Kansas City, it's like we've been doing it for so long. Well, we're going to go to this place on this night, and then we're going to go to this place on this night. It's it's really special, and I was really happy for Otz to win one of those because he had missed out on a lot of those when he was gone. And then to see – so there's a lot of basketball we need to talk about. There's a huge, huge deal is that 22 can shoot the ball again. Right, yeah, he looked like a different guy, which was awesome. Didn't he? Yeah, get twenty two going, Momchilovich. I love what we saw from Hassan Ward throughout the tournament, and most importantly, Keyshawn Gilbert went from really struggling to looking like one of the best guards in all of college basketball. You yes. know what you're going to get with Lipsy. I know what I'm going to get with Robert Jones. Yep. You know, I know what I'm going to get a lot of these guys off the bench. Keyshawn and and Momchilovich are really the key. You've got to have Taman. And those two guys all clicking. I know what I'm going to get from Curtis Jones, right? He's very consistent thus far. But they got everything going that they need right now. And we've seen teams win that tournament before and then choke in the NCAAs. I'm with you. I do not get that vibe with this group. Yeah, this isn't – and again, I don't mean to make fun of it, but this is, this is not the Frosted Tips era where Iowa State went in with a little bit of an entitlement of like, look how good we are, you know. We've got all these dudes, and they did have dudes, but they clearly did not have a great focus for that game against UAB, and it bit them. I don't, I don't think you have to worry about focus with this team. I, I still worry about the ball going in the basket. That's not going away with this group. But I think what you saw that gives me so much confidence with them, number one, they're the number one defensive team in the country now. They have passed Houston as the number one defensive team in the country with that effort. They just held Houston to 41 points which is the lowest point scored by an AP number one team since like 82, right? So this this defense is going to be a problem for everybody it plays. Don't lose sight of that. But secondly, you saw Gilbert and Momchilovich in particular take their game to another level where they went from good players to you can't stop me level good against the best at the time defense in the country. There was back-to-back -back plays. Keyshawn pulled up and hit a three in the second half against Houston. And then uh, Momchilovich did that step back um, crossover baseline three 
that yeah. was unguardable. And if you yeah. give that guy some confidence, it's you can't stop them. You can't. It was so fun because even his teammates know if he gets some confidence, there's not many guys like him in the country. And that could, that can take Iowa State from a very good team that could beat anybody because of its defense to, like Kelvin Sampson said, nobody was beating Iowa State yesterday with the way it shot the ball. And that's the upside. That's the upside for Iowa State. I don't care if it's Connecticut. I don't care if it's Purdue. I don't care if it's anybody. The way Iowa State defends causes turnovers. And if Momchilovich and Gilbert are making shots like they did yesterday, Iowa State is going to be a tough out. And it doesn't matter who you're playing. It doesn't matter your draw. That's the great thing about this is Iowa State can control its own destiny here. And it's just they proved, and it doesn't mean it's going to carry over, but they proved for three straight days that they are one of the, in my opinion, one of the top four teams in the country. And so that doesn't mean you're guaranteed to make the final four, but at no point in my life outside of that 2000 year, did I think Iowa state had a team that could get the final four, even that Yang team. It's like, well, yeah, but you better hope some things go their way. Cause they don't really guard. Um, yeah. And it, it's just this team. I, I feel it. I think they can do it. Um, and weird things happen. The other thing I would say is everyone's going to coordinate UConn here. Be careful because I think, they got a rough deal. Florida Atlantic's obviously dangerous, and they would have to play in that 8-9 game. And I think Auburn's really freaking good. And that is a team that will give them all sorts of problems with their depth and length and everything else. So I actually – I think Auburn is better than than uh, Illinois is. And I like the Illinois matchup a bunch if Iowa State's able to get there. I, I like really that do. too. I like yeah, that I mean, one I, too. I know you're, you're going to start here because it's Illinois and they're a, a program. Um but Illinois really struggles to defend and they don't have a point guard, which means what happens if you don't have a point guard against Iowa state? That's a bad, that's a bad I spot. Wouldn't, I wouldn't want to find it. That's a bad, that's a bad spot. So I actually, you know, I know you can, you can quibble about Connecticut and we are, but basketball wise, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. You, I, I don't want to play Connecticut and Boston, but you know, if you're going to make an Elite Eight, you're going to play somebody good to begin with. So you're just going to have to roll it out there and play. And I think this little disrespect actually gives Iowa State enough of an edge um, that it got after it lost to K-State a week ago and everyone started doubting them. Well, look what happened. And so I, th- I actually think this is an okay thing. Maybe. I know. I'm glass half full guy. But I really, I'm not going to lose sleep over this too much. I'm not. Yeah, I was actually the chip thing. Because you know Drake would have it if they play in the second round, and you know they'll play that up. And oh, they didn't want to play, you know, all that stuff. Oh, oh, and I was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just knowing knowing Ots, and I, I, I could see him using that against. Well, look at this: the entire state's against you guys now. They're all hawks. They're all rooting against you. I, yeah. I totally see that yep. being a th- and like I pr- Keyshawn Gilbert and Hassan Ward do not give a shit about the whole. Well, you guys used to go to the <laughs> Nap Center in the eighties. <laughs> they do not. They don't. Right. They don't they do not. know anything about it. They don't care about it. It doesn't matter to them. It does to like our fans in the state because it was a thing for a really long time, and that's how it was. And we talked about it a lot. And it was cool. Like, it was cool when those games happened. But, like, my point is the players, they don't – it's not It's not a factor. Yeah. And they, it, they don't care. And, and if anything, it could maybe use the other way. Well, let me let me ask you this. If you're an IOC fan, would you rather play Drake or Florida Atlantic? Drake. UConn's playing Florida Atlantic in the, in the second round. Like, you're going to play a good team, whether it's Drake or somebody else. That second-round game is not going to be easy. And so Great it's point like, on that. I mean, you're just, I know we look at, oh my gosh, Drake's really good. It's like, yeah, so is everybody else if you get to the second round. Like, this is, it's the NCAA tournament. This isn't a non-conference game in December here. If you win a game in the tournament, you're a good team. So, you know, whether it's Drake or somebody else, the motivation thing goes out the window in the first three minutes. All right. uh, Whiffles Hybrids presents our Big 12 segment, Plant Your Independence, Plant Whiffles. It's planting season just around the corner. Man, that that is coming up. Um, I think Houston bounces back. I, 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 I kind of, I kind of thought they, man, they were due for a clunker. Now I didn't think it could be in that capacity. I actually picked in my pregame show yesterday that Iowa state would beat them. And the only reason I thought is cause they're so they've been banged up. 
playing three days in a row for them is a bigger deal, I thought, than for Iowa State. They got some injuries, um, but I, I don't know. Like, this feels to me like it'll be a refocus, kind of like Iowa State did when they lost that game down in Manhattan. And maybe maybe that turned out to be a good thing for Iowa State, right? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, is yeah. a loss I mean, ever a good thing? And what do you feel about Houston? Do you still think that they're I, the – are they – I don't at? know. I mean, their their concern is, and Iowa State really exposed them, is once Roberts went out, they have zero size. Tugler's already out. And they – That's were the they, big deal. Yeah. We talk about the guys who are dinged up. The Tugler one's the huge deal. It's huge. And, and Roberts, Roberts is dealing with the shin. It doesn't sound like that thing's just going to go away and, and get better. And my concern with them is, you know, they're a team that's never been gangbusters on offense. They would live on the offensive glass. Well – it's a lot easier to rebound with a 6'8 and a 6'9 guy than it is a 6'4 guy. And they can't rebound as well. Iowa State destroyed them on the glass. Just destroyed them. Um, I don't know. I would not, I would not put all my eggs in the Houston basket. I just I I cannot see if they play a team with size. I know they're really good on defense, but they don't shoot it well enough that I think they can just ease to a win. Now, it wouldn't shock me if they make a final four, but I'm certainly um I'm not as high on Houston, and I know it's you lose a game by 30, it's going to be recency bias steps in. But I did not like how they came out of that game from an injury standpoint. And they just simply didn't rebound. And that's where they have to beat teams is on the glass. Still, you got those guards. Yeah, they're really good. And, and honestly, Iowa State dodged like 10 bullets in that first half because they gave them some wide open looks. And yeah, and they just couldn't make Shed and Sharp and, and Cryer didn't make a thing. And you're right. Those guards are still very good. And that's, and I would say the same about Iowa State. I mean, Iowa State's not getting a you know immense production from its bigs, but the bigs are there to rebound, defend, and that's Houston and Iowa State are built very similarly. I think both could make a deep run all the way to a championship game, but I also think both could, if exposed, you know, if the ball's not going in, could really struggle in the second round game too. I'm going to pull up the bracket right here. One of the problems when when you have my job is that you just start reacting to Iowa State and you don't get to look at anything I know. else. I know, same. <laughs> um, where I need to look at Kansas. What happened with Kansas? I don't even know yet. They got a four seed. I don't even know. I know they're out in Salt Lake, I believe, for the opening rounds. Um, their thing is they just have to get healthy. You know what? Which Again, one other thing about the committee that bothers me a little bit is like Kansas and Marquette both get credit for its guys being out late in the season. Well, they it. I told you guys last I, week. Self, self, literally went really to smart. the committee. Yeah, it was brilliant. He said, "We're not. We don't care about the Big Twelve tournament, but all of our guys will be back for the NCAA tournament." And then right. I love that Porter Mosier tried to do the same thing, and they basically flipped him the bird. <laughs> yeah, I saw it too. Uh, but there, you're looking at a, you know, and this is what I'm saying. Like games in the second round are just going to be complete bloodbaths. You're looking at a Kansas Gonzaga second round game. God, yeah, oh, man. And then if 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 Kansas were to get by them, then you probably play a Purdue. I mean, I, I'm looking like Baylor Dayton in the second round. Or wait yeah. a minute. Yeah, no, wait a second. I'm sorry. Baylor, Clemson. Baylor, yeah, uh, or even New Mexico. Mexico is playing good basketball. That's yeah, the New thing. Mexico like could beat them. Like That that would be terrifying. If I'm I, Baylor. You're going to get a lot of... Uh, BYU, I, Illinois in the second round. You know? I'm yeah, that's, they're, these, they're like the same, girls. very similar teams, those two. The fun part is, and this is kind of old Texas school. Texas Tech, Kentucky. For, for those I write. That's like, that's like, yeah, so Kentucky gets a what? You know, it's... What about TCU Purdue in the second round? Yeah, like, I know. God, like that's why. Okay, if, if you're a Purdue fan, it's like, geez, they got bodies. Like they have dudes. They got. Guys. I wanted Purdue so bad. <laughs> Iowa State would have run the run them up and down the. Oh, that yeah. Would have been amazing. I mean, that it been. I just don't think so. Here's I, I put this out on the old uh, the old X machine. Last year, there was not a one seed that got to the lead eight. Like, there's just no way to know. In fact, in the last seven years, somebody sent this to me. In the last seven years, the number one overall seed, number one over, overall seed this year is Connecticut. We all we all get that. The number one overall seed the last seven years has made the Final Four one time. One time. So You want to hear something crazy? Even though, you know, it's not – craziness is going to happen. We can guarantee that. So this is how we're going to end the show. The NIT brackets are now out. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
It might be the most hated coaching matchup in Iowa State history. Oh, no. No, it's not. Kansas State and Iowa. <laughs> hey, Aiden, Aiden, can you find, real quick, can you find the one shining moment for K-State for me, please? Could you pull that up? Somebody, yeah, some Iowa State fan made a, made a one shining moment for K-State, <sighs> and it was probably the best thing. I've seen. No way. Fran and Tang, who both may or may not be around next year, together. Where's that game at? Iowa. So there'll be like 40 <laughs> people there. Yeah, Iowa got the three seed. Kansas State is unseated. So. <laughs> They're unseated in the NIT? Yeah. How is that even a thing? Yeah. How is that even yeah. possible? They don't have seeds for certain teams? Uh, they only do top four in uh, each region. Well, the NIT is now uh, the bowl game, by the way, where these teams are now like, nah, we're we're good. There's yeah, going to be like five schools who are like, yeah, we're not playing. Yeah, we're we're good. Thanks. That is on. Un... How many people will be at that game? I don't know, but we got to watch this one shiny moment. Uh, we need to give proper credit yes. now to the podcast audience. You're just going to hear uh, some some headlines and stuff, but. Go and check this out to the podcast audience. Let's let's all watch this together and have a good laugh. Friends, we had a great party outside. Group of K-State teams gathered on K-State President Richard Litton's lawn, chanting three Kwan. And it's later, a few basketball players, including Tomlin, appeared on the scene in support. Just hours later, Athletics Director Gene Taylor announced Tomlin's dismissal from the team. The ball is t- now there's a report out of Kansas that Tang was complaining that someone from Iowa State was using a cell phone to spy on Tang's puddles. Ludicrous. Ludicrous rumors. Well, he saw Connor Stallion. Stallion's behind the bench, apparently. This isn't a Connor Stallion thing. This is stupid. I mean, I, I know you saw what you saw, but I'm not going to talk about it. And others need to be much more careful with their words moving forward. And we had more dudes than they did today. My life might be kind of mad. I wasn't trying to get a tech. I didn't, I didn't say anything. And then I got a tech was telling Gary that he was the adult because he was chirping with one of my players. Oh, just part of your group, you no, no, he just did this like, shaking and so forth. He just did a fly by. It's mine. We got our kick there. We shook everyone's hand. So I guess it's different here today. He might be the second biggest flopper in our league because the number one flopper plays by Iowa State. He's going to be the same the right? What is that? I'm just telling you, I'm really excited about next week because I believe we're going to be in the NCAA tournament. And I'm excited about, uh, you know, next week and what God has in store for us. <laughs> the best part is the like graphics throughout it <laughs> like 1992 and then at the at the very end it's jesus up in <laughs> heaven with the nit, NIT banner <laughs> again like the only uh, thing it's missing is him referring to himself as bruce willis, bruce willis. Yeah. yes oh. my whole thing i i'm not and, trying to be offensive here i identify as christian okay like i'm not it drives me crazy when guys like Tang and Scott Drew do the whole like Tang steal. Ah, you know, I'm I'm excited for next week. God's gonna put us in the NCAA tournament. I can't wait to see, you know, what, what God has in store for us. It's like, here's my thing. A lot going on. You know, God's got like this whole universe that he's he's taking care of. Like, do you think that he's sitting around being like, this Tang guy? Really, yeah. This this Tang guy's been a really great, great resource, and um, you know, we we really want to keep him, keep him happy. So we're gonna we're gonna get in it, we're gonna infiltrate the minds of the committee to put in Kansas State. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, <laughs> It's like it's insane. Aiden, Aiden wins that Stop. game. I'm gonna. I, I can't wait to watch that game. Um, let me look quick. I was is that just a Wednesday. Know, we need to get proper credit. This was a Kansas fan who made that. Oh video. wow! Oh, there you go. Not even an Iowa State fan. Not even an Iowa State fan. 
that whole thing gets edited. And it'll get lost in the shuffle like, of time. I'm okay, it's... like when the athletes like, "Hey, th- I, I want to thank God for giving me this ability," because it's like it truly is. It's like a God given ability. Like, do you really yeah. think, Jerome, that God is up there dictating who's in the NCAA tournament? Is that really your belief? Well, there are what six bid stealers this year. So, anyway, <laughs> what a time what, to be alive. What a, games what a, on Tuesday in Iowa Tuesday. City. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Can I'll be. Go? I'm gonna. I'm getting to Omaha. In <laughs> oh, time, I guess so yeah. I we gotta go to down, Omaha. Sit down and watch that one. I think it. All right. It'd be I a shame if Iowa State fans showed up and just booed the oh entire time. Or, or, or well, Aiden, you sh- oh, so here's you Aiden, here's, here's the brilliant. thing, guys. You guys, don't. I know no one's listening um, down in Manhattan. I'm sure, but I'm guessing tickets are really reasonably priced. You could probably even sit behind the K State bench with the video camera and film it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the gift that keeps on giving. But hey, honestly, I just want to, Chris, I know you feel the same way because, man, it was a great week. We ran into so many Cyclone fanatics and friends and new friends and old friends. And that's that's why we all love this place and love what we get to do was the, you know, like the, hanging out with the Adams crew for a couple times last week. That was awesome. Our guys, Matt and yeah. Sean, and I mean, on and on and on. It was just I was like emotional when I went to bed last night because like, yeah, I had same. these people who I just met over the years and that, and now they're like close. For, it's just my guy, Chad, honestly, it's the, this sounds so whiny because we have cool jobs. Okay. That's hundred percent. We have cool jobs that we're blessed to have. I thank God every day. I, that was a joke. <laughs> Again, I don't think God cares. Like I, I think I think God's like, man, we need to make sure Williams is really having career fulfillment. Like, Whatever. Cares how you treat people, though. Yes, and um, the best part of what we do is being around all the people. That's why it, that's what keeps me going the most. Um, and that's I think why I love Kansas City so much and that experience because the people. And we had an event on Wednesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and like, I mean, I it did you like pinch yourself like that it's real and that like all these amazing people continue to show up and support. I mean, we have over six thousand people on this podcast right now watching us. Yeah. And I though there will be twenty to twenty five thousand people to consume this by the time noon it hits tomorrow. And like that's insane when you think of how we started this and when Jeremy Lynn started this website and uh, we're just blessed. Uh, we really are to have all of all the people like I, that's what it's all about. It's all the people. And uh, thank you. That's the best way to put it. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the thing is uh, the reason why we love all up. We're listening to this because you love Iowa State. And I mean, we're we're doing this together. And I think that's the, the coolest part is I think all the lifelong memories from last week, even if the committee disregards it. Um but it's just one of those things where this is this is why we we love this place, and the fact that Iowa State's on this national spotlight. You know what? Even if even if this journey ends, and it's going to end somewhere, and it might be painful when it does, but we're going to go through it together. And I think that's the great part. Then we'll keep coming back because that's what we do uh, because of the memories like we had this week, and they don't happen enough. And I think you know the the one unfortunate part of with this maybe getting hosed a little bit of the seed is you lose track of how special this week really is and what it's all about. So let's celebrate that. I think there's more good times coming with this group. And uh, we're going to be there every step of the way and hope to see you all in Omaha. And let's run it back, everybody. Remember, the portal opens tomorrow. <laughs> well, that too. We're still we're still about, oh, what are we, $50,000 short of our matching challenge for this month of March. So if you ever thought now is the best time for it. And I'm going to be honest, I, guys, I, I feel I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. I'll just put it that way. I mean, we've got an awesome group, but. You just don't know for sure, so I'm hoping for the best. And I really think if if it goes how I think it will and you were able to hold on to all the guys that we want to hold on to and, you know, obviously want to add some folks in the portal, you're looking at an Iowa State program. Guess what, everybody? This whole top 10 thing's not going anywhere. But the, we got we to keep, keep plugging away. The men and women could potentially both be top 10 preseason next year. Yeah. I'm t- that's potentially. I'm if the, if the portal season goes well, I don't think there's any question. It's very possible. He's so Brent you, Bloom. Any, any help is appreciated. We will collective.com and, and certainly love Cyclone Nation for all you guys are doing to keep this thing going.
we appreciate you all. Um, thank you so much. We will see you guys in Omaha. We will have another pod. We are doing the live show from Beer Can Alley in Omaha, Wednesday at 6. Anybody can come. We're not doing tickets because nope, no it's tickets. such a big arena. But we are asking for free will donations to the We Will Collective. And remember, anytime you buy an Ames lock, do they are they going to have enough Ames lock? I, honestly, like, do you know how that's working? Because it is distributed in Omaha. The bat signal has been placed to our <laughs> friends at West Zone and said, "Hey, I'm just saying, like, team. I they could hey, be team. sold out on Wednesday." Well, I, and again, everyone realizes how Cyclone fans travel. Any accommodations that can be made are going to be made as much as we can. I would love it if it runs out because that means we did our part. It will run out. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm telling you right now, if there's Ames Lager left by Friday, I'll be surprised. I, I would be surprised as well. Because I, I, I don't even know the distribution scenario. I don't know. I, I don't think you can have enough of it. I just, we're, we're going to try. We're going to do the best we can. Because <laughs> So I, I can't I can't wait to find maybe out. Maybe we everybody. can get the rest of that fifty thousand. Yeah, let's see. I'm I'm that it, would be incredible. It will run out of beer. I promise you. you could we could we drink fifty thousand beers? Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. Let's try it. Let's see if we can do let's, it. I mean, there's gonna be how what? There's okay, so ten thousand Iowa State fans 10, 000, there. That's five beers a person? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Westo, you're gonna need more than fifty thousand beers. How many cans of Ames Lager exist right now? Like, I don't even know. Like, I don't understand how this all works. This is fascinating. Drink uh, it. Get, Drink the get, beer. Get, let's get our guys mad on the podcast. You probably explain it. But yeah, yes, we keep should. Drink. The, the, the good news is if you drink it and it runs out, that's better than the alternative of not drinking it at all. There you go. He's Brent Bloom. Aiden Wyatt produced the show tonight. We appreciate that. It's good to be, be able to go live on such a big night. We'll have all of our normal programming. Coming up this week, we appreciate all that, and we'll try and um, give you guys an update, too, uh, as we get closer to Wednesday for details on that. But thanks so much. We appreciate it. Go Clones, and we'll be back later this week.